Um, after reading us some of your, your reports, especially the one you submitted to the DUI, one of the, the one of the positions that you took, which I think I understood correctly, I would like to clarify it, is that um, the question of subject matter jurisdiction can be asked at any time. Is that correct? Okay, the question he asked was, is subject matter jurisdiction I'm talking about? This territorial jurisdiction, the jurisdiction of the United States over the territory, is a defect that can be raised at any time. In law, yes, you can raise it before the judgment, you can raise it in the middle of the trial, you can raise it after the trial, you can raise it after the judgment. And, and so, if that question is raised, does that become a paramount question that has to be answered before all It has to be answered. Before all this can be answered. Unless they cheat. Which they do. Oh, Which they do. do. Yes. Okay, uh, well one more question then Leon and Dexter, can you come up please? Yeah, I just want to make a, a statement. Uh, people have to be cognizant as to what court they enter because uh, within the United States there may be about three or four constitutional law courts. The rest uh, fall basically under the uh, Admiralty or Maritime laws and they're not subject to honor the constitutional laws. So be careful what courts you step into. Okay, thank you. Okay, Leon and Dexter, you, you mind coming up? Dex? <laughs> Leon, you come up. But. I, I think I'd like to hear from, I, I was coming to listen. So, yeah, you know, we, we want to hear as much as we can from you. Also. Well, that's about it for me. Oh, okay. Um, in terms of action, that's yeah, the real yeah. question. Yeah. I'm you guys. You wait, 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 wait. Mike. Yeah, I want to ask you a question. Thank you. So, aloha. Um, my name is Ilima, and I'm at UH. I'm with the student group Haumana, and which is the student hui for Mana Movement for Aloha no Kaina. So, I got it. Uh, today, first of all, I had a wonderful gift on this 4th of July given to me, and that's talking to my dad who lives in Washington State and who's been a supporter of federal recognition for longer than I knew what it was. And today he told me he's been following, sort of, he's been starting to question it when he was watching um, the OHA Board of Trustees testimonies. And then after watching the Department of Interior testimonies, he's, he's coming to the good side, yeah? He's abandoning federal recognition and he's in support of independence. And so he's gonna help organize some of the diaspora in Washington state who are gonna be having their own hearings over there in August. But I think one of the most powerful things about the Department of Interior testimonies is that in our situation, because the US has never had to subjugate us by violent force, um, they've relied on the successes of their shaming on us, of their erasure of our history, and basically of us buying into, um, you know, this myth of American jurisdiction and um, entitlement here. So I think one of the most powerful things about the DOI testimonies is now you see everybody coming out and just not giving them that authority anymore. And that's really powerful. And um, But one of the things that I saw in your talk on the... Kanaka Express or one of those recently was you talked about how you had just given a talk in Bogota, I think, and about how upholding the law is has become an act of civil disobedience. And I know that we're talking about education and getting people to see the truth and things like that, but really the power still lies in um, how much we're willing to uphold their authority. And so I think of Auntie Don Wasson and the struggles going up there in Ko'olau Loa, and I'm wondering if um, you can talk a little bit about taking that idea of civil disobedience in terms of this jurisdiction stuff to a broader, more massive place um, as a strategy for us to continue to kind of uh, take the pegs out of that thing that we've been upholding this whole time. And I'm wondering if that's a way that we can support movements like what's going, or make it a movement, rather than having poor Auntie Don Wasson be stuck in their house, in their courts, till who knows how long and who knows how much money. So I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit more about that. 
Uh, in Bogota on June 12th, I presented a, a paper to a conference of uh, professors of law from the North, North America and South America. And my paper was entitled, Teaching Law in Occupied Hawaii, When Obedience to the Law Becomes Civil Disobedience. In other words, to obey the laws of the United States now, which says that they don't have jurisdiction, you're treated as a criminal. You're treated as wrong. So, if we educate everybody, and everybody gets up and goes in the courts and says, I want my rights in the United States law, you prove to me that you have jurisdiction. The system would have to come to an end. But notice I said when everybody does that, you leave it just to a few, they can be picked off. That's what happened to me 20 years ago. And that's why it took me 20 years to recover. <laughs> then, if I have 60 family members that own a fully undivided interest in the whole Angkwa, then I should have every one of them file. You should have everyone file, but I'm thinking across the state, okay. everyone. Exactly. In other words, to me, as an educator, as a professor, my job is to educate everybody, right. to get the word out. And we are just at the beginning of the beginning. I was gone for about 20 years after I got hit with those $70,000 sanctions. The first time I brought this up in public ever since then was April 17th of this year. That's when Dr. Crabb picked up on it. And he put it together with Dr. Sai's material. And he asked the question to the Department of Interior, which blew their mind. So we're just beginning. A lot of people have been working at this for a very long time. But the education is beginning to go around with these DOI hearings, and with social media, and with the internet. So I think that is what we have on our side. So to me, education is powerful. We're a peaceful people. That's the example that our queen set, that Kamehameha III set, when the British took over. He went to the hills and prayed. He prayed, that the life of the land is perpetuated in righteousness. And it is, because the British admitted they were wrong. They admitted that a government that's not Pono, that's not righteous, can never rule the Hawaiian Islands. The truth is, the Hawaiian Islands have never been taken away from the Hawaiian people. It's been a facade. We have let our ancestors down, the ones who wrote the Kuwait petitions and said, we protest, they won. We got fooled. We got fooled by a very clever, very clever, very deceptive United States of America. They don't know what to do about it now. They don't know what to do about it now. We can take action. It's going to be peaceful. It's going to be through the courts. Why? Because we have the law on our side. I'm a doctor, but okay. I, just call me Professor Chang. Okay, Professor Chang, have you seen that, that movie that's out right now, America? No. Well, I've seen it twice already. I, I would love to hear the discussion oh. after, after you see that. But, but it's major that, too bad they didn't include Hawaii, uh, along with uh, interviewing the uh, Sioux Indian Nation woman that uh, said how sacrilegious it was for them to have carved into their mountain there in North Dakota. Uh, it would have been very interesting to have Hawaii's story there, which would have been the exception that that would have caused unreal unrest in that whole movie. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, there's very. I think this discussion is heading in a very, very good direction, and I think we're also at the point where we have to ask. Um, what you're, we are asking, and that is, uh, where do we go from here? How do we assert um, who we are as Hawaiian nationals, and how do we how do we uh, challenge the courts? Unified. Unified, right? But the other thing is that we we can. You know, your question was really good. That you're fighting as much as you can, but it's in their courts. We've become really experts at understanding what their courts are and what their laws are. But what about our own courts and laws? If we're saying that they're here and they're illegal here 
And if, if we're saying that their courts are illegal and their laws are illegal, then what are we doing in those courts and those laws? Yes, but and, you and must expose them. I, I understand, I understand. But the best way to expose it is to hold up our own courts and our own laws. Because that way, you actually are, are causing a rejection. You're basically saying, I reject your, your laws. I'm not going to fight in your court. I'm not going to play in your playpen where you have all the advantages and, it's, and the game is fixed. We're going to play in our own courts. We're going to, we're going to use our own courts, courts to, well, no. the laws of the Hawaiian Kingdom and the courts. Now, that's what I'm saying. We have to bring that up and we have to activate it so that we can utilize it. If we're saying we're in Hawaii as a lawful people, then we have to have our own laws to, uh, to, to which we, uh, we turn to, to protect us and also to support us. So uh, that's what, one of the issues, yeah. Not you that's under fighting on a fire line right now. It's myself. I'm 70. Okay, okay, I understand. And the thing about it is, my house is loaded with paperwork because of this system. Okay, I understand that. But the thing about it is, we have to go into the system to expose them and then to make sure that their laws are against me okay. and they cannot use it against right. me. Right. But so what, do you, have to get what them, do you do with that expose? You've got to get them to dismiss the case. Okay, you have to get them to dismiss it. Okay, you can you can do that if you want to, but let's say that they don't because they they really have stacked this deck have against you us. Ever had, have you ever lost any land? No, I have haven't. Have you ever had any land to be lost? I haven't. Well, then don't talk about that. Okay. Because you've never been there. You've never been on the bloodline of your people. Okay. okay. When you can tell me that you're still on the land, seven, nine generations, let me tell yeah. you. You have a right to speak, but as far as I'm concerned, you have no right to say okay, that. Okay, but me. but I don't have an obligation to go to their courts and and try to get them to do what I want to. Yeah, but I want it's to have not done. your land in their court system. You yeah, and, and it's not their land in your you in their court system lose. either. You have nothing to lose because you have nothing. Okay, have but I'm land. okay. So I'm talking about I when are we going to stand? I'm broken. Superior title to this land. You have nothing. You have no land, I, I, no I have, I have land as well. Have I have land. You have land. your land from your kupuna and the, the mahele up to the present. Aye. Recite them. Aye. Recite them. I can't recite Go them right now. Okay. 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 What? Don't tell okay. You them. recite that to them under their laws. No, 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 no. You cannot tell me that because you I, have nothing to lose. You have nothing to lose. I have just as much to lose as you do. No, you don't. I have don't. my country you and have, my, my future. You now, have the no thing problem. is, you I'm, don't have a I'm looking for a way where we don't lose it. Okay. And the way we don't lose it is to, pre is to raise up our own nation. Excuse Instead me. of saying, can you guys My please... nation is already in place. Okay. That's why I cannot support Kana'i Because there is no... I'm not talking about Kana'i I'm talking about an independent, sovereign nation. Yes. The restoration of the Hawaiian Kingdom. Excuse me. That has to be raised up. Otherwise, and otherwise we're saying, you don't have jurisdiction. Well, then who does? Excuse me. The land... We have to step... You must know your genealogy. You must Aye. know the stories of your kupuna because the aina is connected to akua. Okay, and how is that working in their courts? How is that working in their courts? Excuse me. You have, again, I'm going to repeat this over and over again to you. You have nothing to lose. I do. Okay. You're and how is that working? How is that working in their courts? So far, they say you you owe them ninety six thousand dollars. No, not ninety six, ninety three. Right. Or ninety three thousand. Right. They can say. It. Okay. I think they can say anything they want. That doesn't mean that they get it. You All right. Get it? All right. Okay. You get it. That doesn't mean that they get it. That's right. And that's why I go there and I fight them. Okay. And I'm not saying you don't fight them. 
Yes, but still, yet yeah, I'm in the court system. They took me there, not because I wanted to. Okay. Don, Don, you have a legitimate one way yeah. to escape. And I'm not yeah. saying don't fight them. Yeah. I'm not saying don't fight them. I'm saying yeah. if we're going to replace them with who we are, we have to raise ourselves up and we have to raise up our courts and everything else. Because otherwise, we're going to be just continually fighting them. And even if they admit they're wrong okay, in so one then, place. You know, okay, so you, you, you are, you know, talk is cheap because you're not on the firing line, okay? I am on the firing it's line. It's easy for you to talk because you have no land to lose. You don't have any houses where your mom put a live inside. You don't have any lobby. Yeah, you don't right. have none of it. You don't can even feed yeah. your own people from the land that my son planted the column. Because that's all been stolen. Oh, don't cry to okay. somebody it's been stolen. Oh, you guys right. never protected it. You never protected your group on this land. And that's why you're not on it. I have land. Yeah, right. You go to Arrow? No. Well, see, I rest my case. Okay, my case. Okay. So, if we're going to be saying we are a nation, we have to assert the fact that we are a nation. We have to assert the fact that we are Hawaiian nationals. And the way we do that is to, is to challenge the laws that are there as well as the, the power that is there. And so, um, several years ago, uh, Filippo Souza and myself and Pomai uh, Kenny uh, put together a, a group called Ho the uh, Committee of Hawaiian Nationals. And the idea is to take up actions so that we actually challenge directly the authority uh, of the United States and the state of Hawaii. And by taking up these actions, there are actually ways in which we assert ourselves and put the United States constantly into the position of having to defend or prove its own jurisdiction, which they can. So, one of the things we had last year uh, at the state legislature was a, a, a resolution uh, <clears throat> for the state to recognize Hawaiian nationals as a people lawfully living in the Hawaiian Islands. And this is, was done to, mainly because we're saying to them that they are right now discriminating and per persecuting and prosecuting our people simply on the basis that we are Hawaiian nationals, not U.S. citizens. And they're doing this in violation of their own law. They're doing this in violation of our Hawaiian national laws and in violation of our treaties. So the idea was to get the, uh, the state legislature to actually uh, include that or to admit that we are under the protection of their laws as well. Just simply because we are Hawaiian national doesn't mean we don't have rights within the Hawaiian Islands. So. Um, we are working on that right now, and we're going to be changing that particular resolution into something a little bit stronger, saying uh, basically that we are in this session that the Hawaiian nationals, um, uh, oh, that the state will not discriminate against uh, Hawaiians simply because of their nationality. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I've been following what you guys have been doing yeah. on this, and I understand what you're presenting here. I have a question to this thing that you're presenting. If you are standing on the position that the, the state of Hawaii does not have a jurisdiction, why would you ask them to recognize who you are? All I'm asking them is to admit, to admit that that we are uh, a nation, uh, a people that are being discriminated against. I'm not asking them to recognize us, really. I'm asking them to recognize the fact that we are here and that we are Hawaiian nationals, that we don't have to be U.S. citizens in order to be protected or left alone. Okay. Um, anyway, so there there are a number of of, of uh, actions that we have that are that we are uh, we're we're going to be working on. Uh, one is that if if we are Hawaiian nationals living in the Hawaiian Kingdom, yes, Uncle Bill. Just as you're saying these words, we admit. Why do you use by saying we admit? Why do you use those words? Because those words are their words. 
what are you admitting to? I you believe? assert. I, I don't know if I said admit. I said assert. Okay, then you should not then. You should not use okay. the language of the people okay. who want to... I, I, I can't fully hear your question or your remarks, but... Um, okay, well, anyway, I'll just move on. The, the issue is that we need to assert who we are within where we, where we live. One of the other ways is to actually challenge other taxes. We are not liable for their taxes, uh, and yet they continue to, uh, uh, to levy taxes against us. So I'm just saying that there are actions that we can take as individuals and as groups, as small groups or as large groups, to challenge the status quo that will then put them into the position of having to continually um, uh, uh, prove that they have jurisdiction. Uh, there are also lawsuits that we can we can be mounting that will be even more than simply trying to prove <clears throat> theoretical or or legal points. Simply create cases in which those legal points come forward. Yeah. Can we get you a little closer? What this is as far as I can get it. I'm sorry. What you have to do is don't start with the premise that you have to use their concept. You have to use their set of, you might say, activities to prove your case. Right. You have to leave them out and say, in God's name. Use the Lord's name. You, nobody's been using the Lord's name. In the Lord's name, you have to ask them the question. Ask them the question. That question is simple. Tell us, tell us, where is your authority to do what you want to do when we already have that right. Exactly. Okay? You must not say that you're using any portion of the language that they are presenting to you. You cannot do that because once you open your mouth and say, we are using, you got in a trap. Forget that Okay, trap. Uncle Bill, I totally agree with you and that's what I'm saying. We assert ourselves of who we are and allow them to come and challenge that, and so, then they so will far, say. So far, yes. Give me an example of how you've been attempting to use Good your power Good by asserting the language, the words that you have been. What words have you been using to assert your right to be who you are? Not your right to be subject to the words of the United States. Okay. Can I read something to you then? This is from the House resolution that we had uh, put in. It says, whereas the state has on numerous occasions and in official documents and statutes, including Act 195, Session Laws of Hawaii 203, affirmed that beginning in 1893, the United States violated the sovereignty of the Hawaiian Kingdom when it colluded with insurgents to usurp the government of the Hawaiian Kingdom. And, whereas, international law confirms that the sovereignty of the Hawaiian Kingdom was never relinquished or extinguished, and that the Hawaiian Kingdom is in continuity. And there, whereas, international law prohibits the coercive assignment or altering of a person's nationality and citizenship to a foreign state without explicit free, prior, and informed consent of the person. And whereas, in Section 19 of the Admission Act, the United States Congress affirmed that the Admission Act itself does not confer or terminate or otherwise change the nationality status of Hawaiians. And whereas, a sizable part of the population of the Hawaiian Islands identify themselves as Hawaiian nationals and lawfully reserve and assert their right to claim nationality uh, in the Hawaiian Kingdom. A nation in continuity and <clears throat> natural birth, uh, let's see, uh, and natural birth. Whereas <clears throat> the rights 
to Hawaiian nationality are conferred by natural birth and customary law and practice, where, whether li linearly descended from Hawaiian nationals by birth within the physical boundaries of the Hawaiian Islands or by a formal process of naturalization. And whereas, pursuant to Hawaiian Kingdom laws, international treaties and conventions, the law of nations and all other standards relating to nationality, Hawaiian nationals are citizens of the Hawaiian Kingdom residing in their own country, the Hawaiian Islands, and are not citizens of the United States or residents of the state of Hawaii. And whereas, in addition, the term Hawaiian national is not synonymous with the term Native Hawaiian, which is coined by the United States Congress to narrowly define Hawaiians according to Aboriginal blood quantum. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the House of Representatives of the 27th Legislature of the State of Hawaii, regular session of 2013, that Hawaiian nationals are hereby recognized as an authentic population residing lawfully in the Hawaiian Islands, and be it further resolved that the Hawaiian nationals are recognized as the authentic heirs, beneficiaries, and body politic of the Hawaiian Kingdom, a nation in continuity, and be it further res resolved that the state commits to uphold the laws regarding nationality-based discrimination and to encourage the courts and law enforcement agencies in the state of Hawaii to cease all nationality-based harassment and prosecution of Hawaiian nationals. And be it further resolved that Hawaiian nationals as an authentic body politic have the right to organize and restore their national government of, by, and for the people of the Hawaiian Islands. And basically, what we're saying, we're not asking them to to deem that this is who we are. We're saying this is who we are. You have a, uh, uh, an obligation to recognize that who we are under international law. Stop. Stop. Yeah. Stop. Yes. All during, during the, the time you were speaking, only going to the same people. all during the time you were speaking, you said that they had the right. You use these words. You have the right. As Hawaiian nationals have the rights. Read that sentence. Whereas the rights of Hawaiian nationality are conferred by birth and customary laws and practices. That's why I use the, the term rights. Filippo, I mean, I'm not Filippo. I, I, I just want to make the same statement. You've wrapped everything up nicely, but you use for the diaper, yeah? This one. The language. Sorry, I'm going to need a bite. You get it next time. Uh, yes, because this was a resolution put in front of the state of Hawaii, and it does use their language, correct. Why, but, why do you want to use their resolution? Why? Because we want the state of Hawaii to stop prosecuting our people. We want them to realize... We want the state to stop prosecuting? Prosecuting our people, throwing Filippo in jail, and things like that, because he's a Hawaiian national. We want to say that Hawaiian nationals are not prosecutable within this, this under the state state and the federal laws of the United States. If I permit you to use the